I thought for the devotion for this first video, we would look at the theme verse for all of these videos, which is Psalm 19 and verse 1, but also want to look at verses 2 and 3 as well. The Bible says, "...the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork." Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. I think one of the greatest things about being outdoors, hunting, fishing, camping, walking in the woods, whatever it is, I think one of the greatest things, actually the greatest thing, is just being able to be out in God's creation, being able to look at everything God has made, look at all the beauty, look at all the detail, and just stand in wonder of who God is and how awesome He is. The first verse there tells us that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Creation shows us that God is a powerful, awesome, mighty God. You look at the heavens and how big they are and God created all of that. I remember um, I've been to the Atlantic Ocean a couple of times and I can remember standing, while I'm not a big fan of the ocean or beaches, you know, I'd rather be in the woods or in the mountains somewhere. Um, I do remember standing there on the shore of the Atlantic Ocean looking out and just thinking about how awesome God is because He brought all of that into existence with just the words of His mouth. In the Smoky Mountains, the highest peak is Klingman's Dome. And if you go to the top of that, there's a lookout tower that you can climb up and you can look out for miles looking out over Tennessee. And I remember feeling the same way standing up there, looking out and just thinking about how great and awesome God is. Verse number two says, Day into day uttereth speech, and night into night showeth knowledge. That means creation screams to us. It tells us constantly there is a God. You cannot have a creation without a creator. You can't have a building without a builder, a painting without a painter. So you cannot have creation unless there was or is a creator. If you were to ask me where I got this shirt, and I told you that I just took some thread and fabric and some buttons and threw them in the corner of my closet, and a few months later I came back and this shirt was there, you'd think I was either trying to pull a fast one on you or that I was crazy. Yeah, that's exactly what the evolutionist believes about the universe. Adding millions or billions of years does not make it possible. As a matter of fact, what we know from observation is that you can't get something out of nothing and that time wears everything out. It wears everything down. Time has a negative effect on everything. Our bodies wear down, our houses, our cars, the water heater wears out, the washing machine wears out, the fishing rods wear out. Time has a negative effect on everything. Just because you say that something took millions of years to happen doesn't mean that that's possible. We know that that's impossible. Whenever we read verse number three, it says, there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. That's a fantastic, awesome verse because what that means is no matter where you live on this earth, you can look at creation. You can look at yourself because you're a part of creation. God created you and you can know, no matter who you are, where you're from, you can know that there is a God. God has revealed Himself in many ways to man. He's revealed Himself through His written Word. He has revealed Himself through Jesus Christ, His Son. He's revealed Himself through our conscience. Where did your conscience come from? But He's given us something that we call general revelation. And general revelation would be creation. And that is revelation that no matter where you are, you may have never seen a Bible, you may have never heard the name of Jesus Christ, and you might even try to ignore your conscience. But you have to look up at those stars. You have to look at those trees. You have to look at your hands and uh, your own body and uh, just all the little intricate details of just the, the eyeball and um, uh, the heart and just how your body works. You have to look at that and know somebody had to create everything, including me, because none of this could just happen. 
we are told that by the evolutionists that in the beginning there was nothing and nothing exploded into something and then that something swirled around for a long time and became everything that we see now. That's the condensed version. I removed the millions and billions of years. Have you ever experienced anything like that? Have you ever experienced order from chaos? No time wears everything out. Chaos makes everything worse. But a divine, intelligent creator can create a vast, intricate, detailed, working universe where everything works just as it, has, as it is supposed to work. Now, man, when he sinned, we ruined all of that. That's why everything's wearing out, because man brought sin into the world. But no matter who you are, you can look at creation and know there had to be a creator. I want to point out one more verse to you, and it's in the book of Romans chapter 1. Well, a few verses in Romans chapter 1. And this is a good cross-reference to Psalm 19. But Paul is talking about unrighteous people who reject God. And he says in verse 19, Romans verse 1, 19, "...because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them." So that means God has shown everyone that He is real. And he says here, "...for the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen." What does that mean? Well, it's invisible to us because we weren't there when creation took place. But we know that it did. Why? It says, "...being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead." Now look here, it says, "...so that they are without excuse." You can look at creation and know there has to be a Creator. And God says, because of that, everyone is without excuse. Nobody will be able to stand before God and say, "...I never heard your name." Nobody ever told me about you. I never saw a Bible. Everybody, everybody knows when they look at creation, this had to come from somewhere. Somebody had to create this. Now, you might try to deny that, but inside you know that there had to be a Creator because it would be impossible to have a creation without a Creator. Now, why do people reject that? Well, the Bible says in uh, Romans chapter 1 and verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. And that's just the first part of the verse. But what uh, Paul is saying is people don't want to believe in God. It's not that the proof isn't there because it is. People don't want to believe in God. Why don't they want to believe in God? Well, because... If there's a God, and there is, and He created everything and He did, that means He created me. And if He created me and He did, He's in charge. He gets to make the rules. He gets to call the shots. And I have broken His rules. I have sinned against Him. And one day, I'm going to have to stand before Him. And man absolutely hates the thought of judgment. He hates the thought of... Uh, paying for his sin. He hates the thought of dealing with the consequences of his actions. Man would rather do what he wants to do and not have to face the consequences or the responsibilities of his action. And if you admit there's a God, then you're going to have to come face to face with your sin because you've sinned against him and deal with that. <clears throat> now, even if you don't admit that there's a God, you're still going to come face to face with Him, no matter what. The saved who have repented of their sin and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone, they will stand before God and He will be our Savior. And we will be judged of the works that we did. Did we live our lives for Him? The lost, they'll stand before Him and He will be their judge. And He will pass that final judgment upon them before He casts them into the lake of fire. If any of this is new to you, or if you've heard it but never responded to it, I want to encourage you to click on the link in the description box and go to our church website and read the page entitled, Are You Aware? It'll walk you through the gospel. It'll explain what I've been talking about here as far as salvation in greater detail. If you have any questions, if there's something you don't understand, get a hold of us. Let us know. If you're in the Terre Haute area, we'd love to have you come by one of our services at Faith Baptist Church. But we want to be a help to you. 
We hope that these videos are entertaining. We hope you enjoy them. We're going to be hunting and fishing. We're going to be uh, sharing some wild game and fish recipes. We're going to be playing some music. But every single video will have a devotion from God's Word, and that's the focus. That's what's most important. And we just want to be able to lead lost people to the saving power of Jesus Christ, and we want to help other believers to be strengthened in the Word so that we can live lives for God that He will be pleased with. I hope you'll come back from time to time and check out some more of our videos. Again, if you have any questions, just let us know. We'll see you next time.